Greetings from Grace Presbyterian Church. I am the Reverend Eric Spoon and welcome this morning to worship. We are delighted that each and every one of you is worshiping with us today. Let us take a moment of silence and prepare our hearts for worship. Gracious and loving God, you have brought us together to worship you. You have helped us to find a place to call home, a place that's lived in and through you. Lord, we ask that you will continue to be with us and guide us and show us how to live and love for your glory so that we can worship you fully and wholly no matter where we are worshiping from. And help us to remember your presence in our lives as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us worship the Lord. without sin we deceive ourselves and the spirit of the lord is not within us therefore therefore let us confess before god and one another the sins of our lives with our prayer of confession let us pray god we know we walk in our lives we know that we say that we walk your path and yet we take our own journey. We know that we say we are following you because you have showed us how. And yet we walk our own way. God, we ask that you will change our hearts and lives so that we can walk in your way, in your glory. 
this day and forever. Because you have made the way possible. So let us only and solely follow you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ you are forgiven. Know this and be at peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Hey, boys and girls. So, I learned that sometimes it's hard to find our way where we're going. I was playing Minecraft with my two boys, and I discovered that they didn't know how to read a map. They have, they have maps in this game, and you can use them to find where you're at and where you're going. And the boys struggled learning which way meant what on the map. And without the knowledge of where they were supposed to go and how to use it, the map wasn't very helpful for them. They couldn't figure out where they were supposed to go. They needed someone to show them the way. And see, that's like our lives sometimes. We need to know where we're supposed to go and how we're supposed to get there. That's why we have parents and teachers and Sunday school teachers and sometimes me to be out there for you to tell you where to go. We help guide you and show you where to go. And we have somebody ultimately above all of that, up above all of us that helps guide all of us, and that's God. And he sent his son Jesus to be the way for us. It says in our scripture today, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that's Jesus' words to us. He's telling us that he is the guide and the way that's going to help us find our direction. Just as my boys didn't understand what that map meant, which was what north meant, what south meant, what do you mean turn this way and that way? They needed to know how to hold the map, where to look, where they were located on the map. They needed someone to guide them. We, in our spiritual lives, need someone to guide us too. And that's Jesus. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to God except through Christ Jesus. Or well, he's our guide. He's our way. He's how we know what we're supposed to do. When we listen to him and follow his commandments and do what he calls us to do, we pray and talk to him, we learn what we're supposed to do in life and where we're supposed to go. So boys and girls, I want you to be listening to that guide, that Jesus in your life as he points you in the direction you're supposed to go. And as he uses those around you, your teachers and parents, Sunday school teachers, and hopefully me today, to help guide you a little bit along that trip and that journey. I hope you have a good week, boys and girls, and I'm going to pray for us, and I'll see you later. Father God, thank you for today and the opportunity we have to be reminded that Jesus is our guide, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and he is the way to our Father God, and I am grateful for that, that he helps show us our map and how to use it and how to get to where he calls us to go. pray that you bless us and keep us in all that we do. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Please pray with me. Illumine our hearts, O God, for your glory, by the power of your word. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is going to be from John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. Hear now the word of the Lord spoken to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him.
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Is the world coming to an end, or is life just beginning? By the time you get to chapter 14 of John's Gospel, the book is near the end. You've only got a few more chapters left to experience Jesus' life here on earth. And then we're on our own to tread the murky waters of life and faith and figure out who we are versus who the Lord wants us to be. It's kind of a scary thought to think that we have to do life on our own, that we have to go our own way to figure out who we are and who the Lord wants us to be. Are you that person? Are you exactly who the Lord wants you to be? Do you think solely for yourself or do you think about God's people? It's so easy in life to get trapped in what we think we're supposed to do versus actually doing it. It's easy to get trapped in trying to be God's people while simply being ourselves. A few months ago, family of four loaded up their possessions and moved from Tennessee to Florida. They'd been down to Florida a couple of times to see the area. They had a place to stay and they knew where they wanted to live and were hoping everything was going to fall into place so that they could live in that dwelling. They knew where their children were going to go to school. They knew where their jobs were going to be. But everything else in life was a big old question mark. How are the children going to adjust to living in a new place? How are the parents going to adjust living in a new place? Is it going to be all fun all the time? Or is there going to be hardships each and every day? Are we going to get to go to work all the time? Or is something in life going to stall us from seeing one another in person? I'm sure we all ask these types of questions as we moved. Or maybe we just said, Lord, lead us and we'll go wherever you send us. But God, we can only go if we go right behind you. You take that first step in front of us and we'll be right behind you. I don't have to fear if I know that you are right there before me. Because if you don't fall, I won't fall. I love John chapter 14 and these first seven verses of it. Do not be afraid is the message right off the bat of the chapter. Do not fear. Put your trust in the Lord. See, what we know from the experience of Jesus through the Gospels is that no matter what we go through or where we go through it, the Lord has been there. And now we know that Jesus' ministry on earth is coming to an end. We know that the end of John's gospel is right around the corner. That Jesus is going to die on a cross as seen in the gospels and go to be at the right hand of God forever. He's going to go and prepare a place for us. And what do you see the disciples' immediate question is? Not, how can we spread this message to the rest of the world? It's, how can we go with you right now? We're so wrapped up in wanting to be right there with Jesus that we forget that there's a whole world 
who needs to know who Jesus is. So Jesus' loving response is, you can't go with me right now. Where I go, you can't. Yet. See, there's still work for you to do. You can stay in that place where you're so comfortable, or you can start spreading out. Meeting a new set of people to share love with. You ever thought about doing that? Recently, Lexi has been asking us to tell us about when we got married and what that story was like. It's been fun reminiscing about our, our wedding day and all the fun and mishaps that happened. Such as right before the wedding started, I was standing in the fellowship hall of Melanie's home church about to drink an orange soda in my tuxedo. Thankfully, the wisdom of a mother was there with me, who said, do not open that can. I said, I'm not going to spill it. She said, that might be true. But every picture you take, you're going to have an orange mouth. It's been fun telling Lexi these kind of stories. Or how Melanie, when I tried shoving cake in her face, went and hid behind her grandmother, someone she knew I was not going to go near with a piece of cake. It's been a joy sharing these stories. It's been a joy being able to prepare Lexi for what life was like for us and what life might be like for her. Because it was not just about Melanie and I. It's about all of us. And when you think of your church, when you think of Grace Presbyterian Church or whatever church you may be worshiping in or with, think about all those people in that church and those stories they need to hear about how love comes in so many forms. And then you think about Panama City or whatever city you are in and all those people who have never experienced love and the love they need to experience. And you think about your country, whatever country you may be in watching this, and how many hearts need to experience God's grace, because they've never felt it before. That's what John is telling us to do in chapter 14. That's what Jesus' words are all about to his disciples when he's saying, you can't go with me yet. You have a promise that one day you will be with me forever. And it will be glorious and amazing. But right now, Jesus is saying, I need you to love one another. I need you to stay here on this earth and be my hands and feet in the world. Be like a mother's love for her child. There once was a child who decided he was going to make a bill for his mom for all the chores she had told him to do. Clean up my room, one dollar. Take out the trash, two dollars. Pull some weeds, three dollars. Play with my baby brother, five dollars. And the list went on and on with various amounts for what it was going to cost for all the chores he had done. He gave the bill to his mom who read through it. She smiled at her son and turned the piece of paper over and began writing something down. After she finished, she handed, back, handed it back to her son who had carried you for nine months free of charge birthed you free of charge, gave you a place to live free of charge, gave you food on the table free of charge, played hours and hours and hours with you free of charge, cleaned up your room after you free of charge, changed your diapers free of charge. And her list went on and on 
with all these things that a mother does for their child with free of charge. The child then smiled at his mom. He said, Mom, I didn't know you did all these things for me. I sure do love you. And he turned it back over and in big letters on his side of the bill that he had made, he wrote in the biggest letters possible, paid in full. Jesus dying on the cross paid it in full for us. No matter what kind of bill we try to create for what it means to be a Christian here on earth, the bill has been paid in full. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one who has made the way possible for us. He's the one who gives us a new life this day and every day. So I invite you, brothers and sisters in Christ, to celebrate with me those who have held your hand through the good times and the bad. Those who have made the way possible for you to be where you are today. And for Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, undeniable sacrifice he made for you, for me, for all of us. Jesus' love is there. Let us go forth and share it. We have nothing to fear because God is always with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God, we know your mercy and love are before us. We know your grace is before us. We know that you have redeemed us this day and will redeem us every day. Thank you, O oh God, for making a place that we can go in this world and in the life to come. Thank you, O oh God, for giving us a way that we can love and serve one another. Break those bonds, those chains that surround us to keep us from being your people as you have called us to be. Help us, O oh God, to know and share your love. Be with those who yet to know what your love is. Use us to reach them with hope and peace and joy and love. And God, on this day that we call Mother's Day, we celebrate the mothers of the world, those who have held our hands, those who have cleaned us up, who have lifted us up, who have picked, up, picked us up, who have helped us to be the people we are today. We cannot give enough thanks to the mothers of the world who loved us with a love like you show for us. For the mothers that we have lost, let us find hope and peace in the mothers that still surround us. And God, we ask that you will be with us as we continue to look towards a day that we will be back together in your house. But God, we know that even though we are separated by space, you are still with each, one, each and every one of us. So we thank you, O oh God, for your glory. Because you are the everlasting God. So let us not fear, let us live in and for you for forever. Because you love us and we love you. For in Christ and we pray. Amen. Go and be the church. Because the church has been made for you. 
Amen. Christ invites us to give not because we have to, but because we want to. We respond to the word of the Lord moving in our lives with the giving of our tithes and offerings. I invite you this day to give back for the glory of God. God, let your glory be revealed through the love of our lives. Let hearts know who you are because of how we live for you. Use the gifts of our lives this day for your glory, so that every heart can know of your love here and everywhere, now and forever. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The love of the
the Lord lives in you and through you. So go forth into the world and share that love, the love of Jesus Christ. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord to make his face to shine upon you and grant you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. On behalf of the staff of Grace Presbyterian Church, I wanted to wish all the mothers out there a happy Mother's Day. Enjoy your day, and I hope everyone spends a little bit of time, even if it's over the phone or through Zoom or Skype or however it is, remembering their mothers today. Have a good day. See you all later.